Today on Across the Fence, we'll meet some of the happiest cows in Vermont. They're part of a relatively small herd that produces some of the highest quality milk in the state. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael in for Judy Simpson. June is Dairy Month, and one of the many ways to celebrate the hard work and dedication of Vermont dairy farmers is through the Dairy Farm of the Year Award. The 2014 winner was announced this week, and the award goes to a farm family in Windsor County. Across the Fences, Keith Silva has the story. Doloff Acres is a small dairy farm in Springfield, Vermont. So small, until a couple weeks ago, the farm didn't even have a sign. We've been here 17 years now, and, and we've never had a, a sign. I called a, a guy, and unique signs, and, and he come right over, and he came up you know, with the whole idea and, and put it down by the road, and there it sits. So it's pretty exciting. Not long before the farm sign went in, Heidi and Mike Doloff received another sign. This time, it was a call telling them they'd been named the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year for 2014. Mike is still feeling a little overwhelmed. It was hard. We were nominated a couple of years ago, and I had to go and give the phone to Heidi because I just, it, it means a lot. You can't explain it. You know, you're kind of speechless, you know, and in, 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 in how it feels. We put a lot of work into this. You know, it's not picture perfect, but, you know, it's, it's always a work in progress and we're always, you know, wanting to, you know, change this or change that. And it's definitely an overwhelming, it's that somebody recognizes your hard work. The Dolofs milk 80 cows. That's half the size of the average Vermont dairy herd. They have some help from time to time, but for the most part, they are Doloff Acres, and Doloff Acres is Heidi and Mike. Other than that, I haven't seen any activity in the barn. They started farming here in 1997 with 30 cows and all the grit, discipline, and effort it takes to be a successful dairy business. The one thing we had going for us was we had 30 cows. So we had a start. You know, we weren't going to borrow money to buy cows to get the whole thing started, and we just built from there and both of us worked out until we get up to the numbers where we were comfortable. We always had that, we didn't have any debt on cattle. You know what I mean? So we had that as equity to get going. And it, it's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of drive, determination. If you know a cow's gonna calve, don't go up and eat supper and go to bed. Go back down and check on her. You know what I mean? Because she might be in trouble. And I think that that's what's really made us what we are. That's the philosophy of the farm. Yeah, yeah. Put in the extra fit. Heidi grew up on a dairy farm and went to college for accounting. She balances out her love of numbers with her love of cows and the desire she shares with her husband to be her own boss. My husband, he could have gone and worked at any dairy. Probably I could have or I could have gone, you know, the CPA route. Thank you, hon. We've worked for other dairies. You know, you can't make the decisions. You know, the, the people that own the dairies make the decisions, and every dairy is different. And so this dairy, you know, we were able to, to do our own thing, do it the way we wanted to do it, and, you know, we both had a taste on how, you know, we wanted to do it. And, and that was, you know, in, in, in 97, you know, we just, we just built it and tailored it to how we wanted to farm. The way the Doloffs farm is to put cows first and to make sure the milk they make ranks with the highest quality producers in the state. This farm may be small, but it's mighty. Size right. Tony Kitsis of University of Vermont Extension heads the committee that determines the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. So when we first got there, our initial reaction was, boy, these folks really pay attention to their animals. You can tell by the cleanliness of their animals, the, the neatness around the barns and the facilities. And when we walked into the heifer barn, those, those baby calves, they knew were their future and they were taken very well good care of. Dairy farmers operate on thin margins. Input costs continue to rise, and the price paid to farmers for their milk is so volatile they often don't know how much they're going to be paid from month to month. These unpredictable markets mean farmers have to be savvy, prudent, and make sure attention to detail 
is their top priority. When I first got the applications in this year, I saw that I saw their name come across, and it's our practice to give all the all the names to the judges and allow them to choose the three finalists that they want to go see. Once they were chosen again as finalists, I knew there was something special about this farm that that farmers themselves wanted to see in what they were doing. It's something that's really hard to put your finger on it, but you know it when you see it. You know that it, that it really comes down to attention to detail. It comes down to the love and passion that people put in to their vocation. And that's, that's that humble nature, I think, that Heidi and Mike have that very, uh, uh, many of the recipients of this Green Pastures Award have shown us over the years. The price farmers are getting for their milk right now is double what it was in 2009. That's when the dairy industry bottomed out, and farmers received the lowest price for their milk since the late 1980s. Not to mention now, operating costs are skyrocketing. More money in the milk check means the Dolofs can repair the back wall of their milking parlor. It's nothing fancy, just what needs to be done. You don't buy stuff and base expenses on a year like this. You know, you should have excellent cash flow on a year, on a year like this and be able to, to put some away. So if there is another 09, um, 09 was scary, um, scary for everybody. Um, but you know, we just, you, you just buckle down um, where it where it's, was just Mike and I. You know, it, was, it, it wasn't easy to, bu to buckle down. But you know, we, we, we were able to buckle down and not have to borrow money to, to stay in business. I know there wasn't many farms that could do that. In, in a year like this, I mean, you know, we do projects like, you know, fixing the back wall in the milk and parlor, maybe replacing a skid steer, or just putting money away for, for another time. For the record, it's not all prudence and hard work on Dollar Acres. Heidi and Mike are raising two children. There's Matt, who likes to drive his tractor around, and Hannah, who wanted the farm to have t-shirts so she could wear one to school. Hannah also names the cows. No surprise, one of them is named Moxie. They all have different personalities, um, and you know, sometimes it just, it, a lot of the names fit. They're just all part of the family. The Dolphs have found a way to farm that works for them. They do their job, and they do it well. Just put your nose down and make good decisions and push hard and you can do it. We had a lot of people that said you can't. There's no way you're gonna, you're gonna do it. <laughs> it was just a lot of things that, you know, it was a hard, it's hard to get started financially and make it all work. Yep, yep, we've come a long ways. It hasn't been an easy road, but it's been very worthwhile. I look at what we, we've built here, and you know, every animal here has been born and raised here. I've raised them in the hutches. You know, we've brought them up through and we, we calved them in and, and milked them, and, and it's just, you know, you just beam with pride. Some days, you know, you look at your cows and it's like, you know, it's, we've built this, you know, and, and, it's, and it's, it's rewarding. Um, it's a lot of work but it's a, it's a rewarding way of life. Drive, determination, and a lifetime of rewards. That's Dolph Acres. That's the 2014 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. In Springfield, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Well, thank you, Keith. Once again, our congratulations to the Doloffs. In addition to receiving the 2014 Dairy Farm of the Year Award, the Doloffs will be honored at the Vermont Farm Show. Our next segment focuses on the fresh produce and vegetables grown by Vermont farmers, which end up on the tables and plates of Vermont seniors. Across the Fences, Rebecca Gollin tells us about the Senior Farm Share Program. That's not rhubarb, that is Swiss chard. Oh, Swiss. Deborah yeah, Eastman has never cooked with this variety of chard before, but she's willing to give it a try. Swiss chard is new to me, but I'm willing to experiment. You know, I'll probably like it. <laughs> Eastman is a resident at the Round Barn, an independent living apartment complex for seniors in Grand Isle. On this day, she is picking up the first installment of her 10-week summer farm share. And I'm very, very impressed. I love fresh vegetables. 
What do you got? I have some green beans and cucumbers, zucchini, and summer squash. Like a number of other residents at the Round Barn, Eastman is participating in a senior farm share program. It's similar to a traditional community-supported agriculture share, or CSA, of seasonal produce from a local farm. We work with farms, CSA farms, and senior housing sites, low-income senior housing sites across the state, to provide um, $50 shares for seniors over the course of the summer. Funding for the program comes from the federal government and is administered on the state level by the Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont. There's 930 participants this year, up from about 900 last year. These people might not have fresh produce and vegetables if they weren't participating in this program, you know, either because of lack of transportation or their disability preventing them. The seniors and the handicapped people in this complex some are on wheelchairs and oxygen, they can't get to the store, some have limited income, they can't afford to buy fresh vegetables. And this is once a week, and so 10 weeks, and you usually get about $5 of fresh vegetables, adding up to $50 all total for the program. Pamela DeCatera lives at the Round Barn and has participated in the program since it became available here four years ago. She's an avid cook and baker, and the extra produce makes a big difference. Sometimes I freeze it for the winter, and I stir fry over rice and uh, omelets and soup, and or just vegetables on the side with chicken. Would you be buying this stuff at the store? If you I wouldn't be able to. People who are on it really enjoy the food. The freshness, the fact that it's organic, the fact that it's local, um, it, it all adds up to a really sweet deal for people here. Meg and Pond works winter, at the Round Barn. She got the housing development involved in the Senior Farm Share Program. Most everyone, once they try it, they sign up again for the next year. The program here, like elsewhere in the state, matches up the site with a local farm. In this case, it's Blue Heron, an organic farm in Grand Isle. Christine Burke and her husband, Adam Ferris, run the farm. We get um, about $50 per participant, and we spread that over anywhere from 7 to 10 weeks. So we provide 5 to $10 worth of food per week, sometimes a little more because I get a little excited about <laughs> the veggies that are coming in. We try really hard not to overwhelm them with vegetables so they don't go to waste, and making sure it's vegetables that uh, seniors or elders um, eat. The, the residents really like the variety of food. They like, you know, the, the greens now, then it'll, then we'll start getting tomatoes, then later on there'll be winter squash. It's just, it just kind of transitions with the season. It's really nice. The farm is just up the street from the round barn, which means that many of the participants get a chance to visit and see where their food is coming from. De Cataract goes to the farm regularly. Yes, I've been to Christine's farm. And we, usually I go with Meg to help load up and everything. The partnership that we have together is great. And it's not just this one-sided, like we give vegetables, but we actually get to have a relationship with the folks in our community. And uh, I get to know more about all of them and they get to know more about me and my family. That community connection lasts throughout the year. When it slows down on the farm, Burke and her family have monthly potlucks with the seniors. We get to visit with them in the winter time and ask them what kind of vegetables they like and which ones they want more of. The success of the program here at the Round Barn speaks for itself. The number of participants has doubled uh -huh. since the program was first offered. But every year more people sign on and because they realize that this is a little extra that they don't have to buy or they can't afford. A lot of these folks <laughs> That's all they knew growing up, and so they just naturally grew organic vegetables, natural heirlooms, but they weren't called that back then. Um, so they're excited to see the, uh, people call them ugly tomatoes or heirloom tomatoes, like the big pink ones or the big purple ones or the yellow ones and that have like the big juicy taste and um, the cucumbers and the green beans. Just those fresh vegetables bring such happiness. Bringing happiness and oh, yeah. access to quality local food to seniors across the state. The Senior Farm Share Program will continue to provide. In Grand Isle, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence.
Thank you, Rebecca. Vermonters who'd like more information about the Senior Farm Share Program should contact the Vermont Department of Aging. That's our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.